Well, welcome everybody to the plein air event as part of this year's 2020 virtual combat arts symposium. And so what we're doing today, the weather has driven some of us inside, but we're having a plein air event. And that means painting out, out in the full air, out in the open air. However, we're gonna change the rules and call it a plein air or from life painting sketch off event. So we've got artists from around the country and overseas uh, who are gonna be part of this event. And uh, we're hoping to get some good art product out of it. And you'll also be able to see as time goes by, uh, we'll be focusing on certain uh, people as they paint. So you'll get to see painting and drawing in process. And then at the end of this event, we're gonna have a show, a little critique and uh, a show and tell with the artwork. So it's gonna be a good day that way. So with that said, everybody, uh, start your engines and uh, let's get working. Room. If I may explain a little bit of what, what I've got set up here, and we might go around and do that with people. I've got a, a basic still life set up here of a canteen and an old cartridge belt. I've got my canvas here set up. I'm going to probably do an over, uh, imprimatura overtone if, if possible, and I'll start sketching and then we'll start putting the acrylic paint on. I'm working in acrylic today. John, what are you working on? Okay, I've got, well, I can't stray too far because I don't have mobile internets. So okay. what I've got is uh, this freeway underpass scene that I saw yesterday that's always struck me and so uh i'm gonna try to do that well at least you didn't strike the overpass i knew you were gonna go there i let you i let you have that one there chris <laughs> <laughs> do something here all right so alex what are you working on I think I'm going to be working from the uh, picture of the Tarawa exhibit. Oh, good. Okay. That's right here on, on uh, the NMMC campus inside, right? Yeah. The wounded deal. Beach. Amber, are you, are you going to be sketching? Yeah, I've got a, um, a photo in my phone. I'm going to have to do it because it's dark outside. Oh, that's <laughs> right. What time is it there? Where you... uh, midnight, just after 11. Oh. Uh, actually, it's, it's 11 past midnight. Sorry. All right. Yeah, so well, I'll do some horses or something. <laughs> I don't know. So how long do you think you'll be with us? We're only going to be doing this for a couple hours. Can you, can you hang with us? Yeah. I, uh, I lasted till 3 a.m., 2.30 last night or this morning. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, well uh, so I think we're going to paint. What's the time on deck currently? 7.10. Or 10.10, uh, uh, 10, you guys. And Eastern Standard Time. So what we're going to do is we're going to kick it off and we're going to go until just before noon or we can go for two hours, but we will do at least an hour and a half of painting, feverishly painting and sketching, and then we'll start discussing our work. And so we can end a little bit early today just to keep the Australians from, from uh, falling asleep. <laughs> is, that, is that right now? Is that? I can see your hands and move it a little bit towards your left. There? There we go. Okay. Can you do that? I'm sorry. Yep. To the, this way? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Just an inch. There you go. There we go. Okay. Hey. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the workaround. We'll We're be all able... about the workaround. All right. All right, everybody. At your easels. All right.
I like your shoes, John. What's that? Oh, thanks. Hello. Are they shoes or are they slippers? Well, I'm in my bare feet. Your bare feet. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is it cold there? Mm. It's a little. It's a little cool, but it's not. No, it's not really cold. Not cold in the real sense of the word. Yeah. Like Australia right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys must be getting chilly. Yeah, I think it's about 10, oh, I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius. Ah. Uh. It's not too bad. That's outside. But, um, yeah. Grab that paintbrush. Uh oh. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm set up now. I'm going to try this out. I got a, a, a tripod for my phone and then. Uh, me and the company of about 10,000 gnats. We're gonna to try to get a little. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. I love your, oh, your scenery is beautiful, Mark. For the record, at least we have one plein air painting going on in the 2020 plein air. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get the old college try, no guarantee. <laughs> we'll see oh, how no, you know two. plein air golf. Plein air is just like golf. It starts out really fun and then it starts frustrating you. There's two plein air. It looks like oh. that's possibly Warren Neary. Oh, is Warren out there painting? Awesome. Looks like it. Yep. He just waved. <laughs> Good deal. I'm going to turn it around this way. All right. Yeah. All that's left is everything else. Okay. Muted, Warren. There we go. Hey, you guys don't have to be muted. If you'd like to unmute yourself, John, and just chat and give critiques. Oh, am I muted? Oh, okay. Whoever said, am I muted? The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we can hear John if we need to. All right. What is we'll it? it? Ooh, there we go. Ah, much better. On my screen, it looks like Bob Jordan and John Decker were looking at each other. <laughs> I hate Bob. <laughs> so I started a painting last night, and I'm just going to use that. Is that awesome. okay? Please. He's out of date. He's ahead of us. I'll show you. Oh, wow. That's what I started. It's a highway patrol uh, officer that uh, instead of a 
a car. He drives a helicopter. Oh, wow. He's from the Golden Gate Highway Patrol, uh, you know, California Highway Patrol Golden Gate Division. So is this those rescue guys you were talking about yesterday or are those another crew? No, those guys, uh, those guys are, are here. Ah, uh, okay. And they're sheriff or they're? Yeah, they're sheriff's department. Oh, gotcha. And Charlie's here. I forgot to point out one of the fun things about my uh, studio. This is another one of my studio gadgets is that I can take my painting and oh, turn, wow. turn it around anytime I'm working and I feel like, well, I want to get this. What is that, John? It's, um, it's a lazy Susan. I mean, it, it's a thing that I made, but the uh, what makes it work is is the uh, the thing that you would use to make a lazy Susan table. Okay. That's all. Turn it again. I just put you on spotlight video. There we go. Nice. Yeah, you can spend literally hours in John's studio just marveling over all his crafty little things, little tricks, and hidey yeah. holes and. It's a great place. Wow. Well, his video gave me a lot of tips and tricks that I, I really appreciate. And I'm going to uh, steal half of those ideas, John. I hope you don't mind. You may have, you, you can use anything <laughs> that you got from me. Invitation, the sincerest form of flattery, is that right? Mm hmm Well, if you learned anything from me, then I'm flattered right there. I learned quite a bit. Amber, you're muted if you're talking to us. My coffee just arrived. <laughs> hey, Am. There it Hi. goes. Hello. Can I hear you going? Can you hear me? Say? I went, I said good day, but nobody, nobody knows how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> good day. How are you good doing? Good day. <laughs> good day. Good on you, mate. <laughs> Who said that? That was awesome. Oh, that was me, John. Way to go, John. I had a I giant talking know. kiwi that worked for me for a long time. I learned from him. Oh, dear. <sighs> Do you like sheep? <laughs> <laughs> Bad. 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 Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one who's painting already. Because we can't see one. Mm -hmm. I'm spotlighting your uh, under the freeway drawing here. That's very nice. Is that watercolor? Yeah, I had a, um, I actually uh, grabbed a cup that already had a mix in it um, from some Sumier painting that I was doing, um, just a, a, a dark mix of uh, Payne's gray. And, um, and so I'm just gonna kind of, kind of block out all the gradations first. Oh, um, nice. Cause that's kind of <laughs> by default what I got going on, so. Excellent. Yeah. And, and again, here's the, here's the image and I'm shooting and I'm going for, you see that? Oh, there a we go. Bit. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> Probably with the glare of the fluorescence here. Uh-huh. Those you bare feet though, I mean, those are something else. What's that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you've probably seen too much of them, huh? Here we go. <laughs> Oh, 
Sometimes you just got to wander on your bare feet. They go along with the unicorn pillows. Oh, of course. Do you ride your sparkle pony in your bare feet? <laughs> Can't talk about that. <laughs> sparkle pony only comes out when the when the moon's just right. Okay. <laughs> no, I got that now. thing. <laughs> a, a friend of mine was um, uh, doing window dressings for this place in 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 San Francisco, and they had that that horse there and she was like hey you want a carousel horse and I was like yeah sure why not I put it somewhere and so I drove over and I got the thing and I was like oh my god it's covered with flocking and it just had all that all that sparkly crap all over it and so when I was go driving back across the Golden Gate Bridge the thing on the back of my truck I could see this the sparkles just sort of flying off the back of the truck <laughs> everybody's kind of looking at it like huh and then they're like eh San Francisco okay never mind <laughs> that just happens that was the fourth sparkle pony they'd seen that morning. Probably. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. At least Nothing that one was tied. It was tied down to something, at least. I pulled up your video, Mark. Wow, you've got a lot of color down already. I tell you, this is um, kind of challenging right now. We've had, you know, the outer bands of the, the hurricanes that we didn't get, thankfully. So we're getting some of the we had you know a little bit of rain yesterday not not directly related to what came through but it's uh i've got some rapidly passing clouds right now and so i'm kind of going in and out of the sunlight and it's kind of frustrating i'm just gonna try to grab what i can get while i can i was just about to say i can see those clouds moving quickly on screen yeah i'm sure they're not going to be there in about five minutes so i'm gonna <laughs> get what i what i can while it's here and move on to something else what are you using? Acrylic or oil? Um, I've got, this is, I, I didn't put any planning into this this morning, unfortunately. I brought, let me see, I'm, I'll turn it around here. I just grabbed a grab bag of whatever paints were on top of the shelf and uh, oh. a little thing. It's uh, by no means the traditional palette. And I've got a very hard solidified dried palette that I'd forgotten to clean about three months ago. So I'm <laughs> trying to figure out what lumps are wet and what lumps are dry. <laughs> but enough to work with. Oh, nice scene, Mark. That's oh. pretty. That's actually a great scene, Karen. She, let me pull her up here. You're muted, so I can't hear you. <laughs> so I was saying, if I can't be outside, I might as well paint the outside. I live Perfect. on uh, Upper Manhattan on Bennett Avenue, brownstones and, well, not brownstones, um, you know, six floor, six story buildings, brick, a lot of fire escapes. So the view you can't see because I can't get my equipment around properly to see exactly what I've got. But I've got a um, fire escape out there Whoa. to the left, which is out of view of what you can see where I got the, you know, the set up. And uh, it's got a little plan on it, so I'm uh, zooming in on a section there. I think one of the hardest challenges I have in plain air is I look outside and I can't crop it, if you know what I'm saying. I can't oh, yeah. edit it out usually as if I'm doing a painting for some reason. So uh, I'm just trying my best to start with a large part of what I really want and then fill in the rest around it. So we'll see how it works. Have you ever seen one of those viewfinders, Karen? Yes, I have. Okay. Those are helpful, but I don't know how long you can hold that up when you're painting and sketching. Yeah, I, know. Really, I, I liked your idea about doing a self-portrait, but I really need to paint with glasses on. I thought, do I really want 
all that on my face and the pain. Of, no, I said, no, I really don't. So <laughs> I want to play outdoors via indoors. Excellent. Oh, Aaron, that, right? Here's why I have a huge collection of TSA inspection stickers as I always travel with a million paints and brushes and crap. But I got a good collection of inspection stickers. A lot of progress going on over there, Chris. What's that? You got a lot of progress. Yeah, what I'm doing now is I'm just blocking in. I started out with a uh, water soluble graphite sketch, and of course, I'm having to adjust as I go on. But now I'm laying in the undertones and trying to get as much as I can out of the way as quick as I can and keep what I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to over do. But right now, it doesn't matter necessarily. I'm not going for detail, I'm going for basic shadow color and value and eventually as I just add little bits here and there this will provide an interesting tone and texture that will we'll finish up relatively quickly hopefully that's the plan is that a um, an acrylic yes it's acrylic what I'm brand using, I'm using uh, generally here I'm using golden open acrylics however we've got a really cool old school tube or two of some Liquitex acrylic polymer. These are from who knows when. The, the packaging is really old school. So the good part about this, the reason I'm using this is because it can dry fast. The open ones stay open a little longer. So I'm using some of these and these tones here to hopefully they'll dry quicker. Which I don't normally wish. <laughs> I was just going to say, we get those in um, Australia too, Chris, the Liquitex. Yeah. Can I show you what I've done so far on mine? Yes, I'm about please to show us. Color. Let me spotlight okay. you. There you are. Okay, so Woo. I started out with a, like a sepia tonal thing. I'll show you what I'm actually copying from. I took a photo of where my horses are the other day. Gorgeous. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. It's just a silhouette. I've never used purple before, so I'm going to have a crack at it. <laughs> Purple's and good. That's, it okay. that's beautiful. What are you using to paint? I'm using, um, so my, what I call mapping out, where I think um, Chris was saying was uh, like blocking out. Yeah. Um, but I, I've got my own terms of what I call them. Um, I'm using um, Art Spectrum oils, which are an Australian brand, um, and I'm just a bit of um, 
called Lequin. Windsor and Newton Lequin. I just, it, I just find that as a, as a thinner, it's great. It's um, um, usually I'd put it on there and just let it dry, but while it's still quite um, workable, I'm going to add the the purple. In a minute, it's going to be scary because it's, <laughs> it's out of my comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, anyway. liquid. My go-to medium liquid sits. It's great. Uh, you know, nice to put down and have it dry pretty quickly. Yeah, mine mine takes a little bit longer to dry. It it doesn't um, um, dry that quick. I don't know if it's a different. Yeah, I liked liquid I hot, but then uh, it's very toxic, so I decided to kind of go away from it. Is it really? I should be wearing yeah. a mask then. I mean, it's, it's no more than your petroleum distillate, but that's what it's based mm -hmm. in. Yeah, I don't it's touch it. it. Well, it has really good qualities, but it's just like everything. The really good white is a lead white, and it's yeah. you can technically, right. but it's really good for you. Yeah. Yeah, the white I use. I don't use the titanium. Or do I? What's the white? Which which white is the really bad one? Um, lead white. Titanium or should be. One of them is it zinc white that's got the um. There's a hazardous material in it. I think it's a zinc one. Well, in California, everything's um. So John will tell you everything's got bad stuff because they. Yeah, you can't get the good stuff anymore out here. Um, we'll smuggle you some, John and John. Smuggle me, some, send me some xylene. Xylene. <laughs> <laughs> what is? I'm a bit afraid to ask. <laughs> it's not well, it's like it? it's like <laughs> acetone, but I don't actually. I haven't seen anybody use it for oh. years. It's just a, it's a um just a thinner, a very powerful thinner. We used it on the um, I worked for a company doing uh, uh all the metalwork for the New Chicago Stock Exchange back in the in the 90s and they had me wiping that down with with cotton gloves <laughs> yeah. and then i realized later i read the msds it's an endo neurotoxin <gasps> not so good for you yeah. i was wondering why i was happen. depressed all winter i was like wow what a depressing winter i've dealt with north dakota but chicago is the worst and i was like oh i was boxed out <laughs> yeah wow no yeah. So I always have problems getting like these 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 green areas dark enough. So I'm just gonna I'm just laying in a bunch of black here. I don't know if anybody has any tips for me. Yeah. I'm just making a mess. Don't mind me. <laughs> I That's think we all do a good job. You can make green darker with burnt umber. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And I've taken uh, or in crimson or dioxazine purple, yeah, mm -hmm. or black or viridian do do a really good art. That's the one thing that amazes me is artists are actually very much like scientists. Oh yeah, mad scientists. Uh yes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's the color wheel. And we mix the burnt amber with the green and see what happens. <laughs> I can't wait till we put this video up on YouTube. I wonder how many hits we'll get. <laughs> or from my guest behind. <laughs> no, no, I thought it was just for the, the comic uh, enjoyment. Me to get yeah. We need to highlight uh, two more. We haven't looked at closely and then hopefully Bob Jordan will show us something down there. Ooh, ah, thanks, John. Did it work? Getting darker, more mysterious. Ooh. There we go. I feel like there's something in chemistry that would have helped with color mixing. <clears throat> well, we have the Germans a lot of lot to thank uh, in the 1800s. A lot of technology, the color technology we have, synthetics. They uh, went nuts with it. Got wow. <clears throat> Is that old master time or when was that? Uh, 1800s especially. They just went crazy with all sorts of color 
theory and technology and they really started creating of course a lot of it became bad later on but they had they developed a lot of good colors glazing colors and all sorts of paint colors mm -hmm. it, it became bad or it was bad all along and they uh, they realized that is exactly yeah it was always bad yeah just like butter but you love it just mm -hmm. like pecan pie a good pecan pie oh <laughs> like the show we were watching about he went back to 1963 and uh he was eating a piece of pie in a in a diner and it was so good because it had lard in the crust and it was all sugar and that. oh wow no 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 you guys should come here to our house. Uh, our oldest works at this place that makes the most insane shakes. Have you seen me post pictures? Uh, oh, definitely. <laughs> mm. This week's, it has a piece of peach pie, I think, on top of the shake. What? What do you think of like something I'd make. Yeah, I actually, yeah, you need this in your life, John. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was uh two weeks ago they had it was called a shake for finn i guess there's a little boy that's been battling heart disease um and he loves sharks and so it was shark week so the the store came up with a shark shake I had to think before i said that um they made a sugar cookie fin that was covered in blue um sanding sugar or whatever on the top and inside it had it was like a tropical shake it had chunks of pineapple it was vanilla ice cream and then they had um, blue sanding sugar at the bottom to make it look like the bottom of the ocean. And then they had drizzled in like strawberry gel type stuff on the sides of the, it's a clear um, glass mug you get your shake in. So it looks like bloody on the top and you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then all this whipped cream on top, but it was a tropical whipped cream. It was like pineapple flavored and blue tinted. And then it had more sprinkles everywhere. And oh my gosh, it was amazing. Wow. Should I I'm starving now. I'm sorry. Oh, Come no. on up. <laughs> I don't think it will ship well. Let me see if I can find a picture. Especially not to here. <laughs> is anybody using oil paint? I am, John. Mark is. Mark, I've got a, a tip that I just learned myself. Somebody made an offhand remark, and I tried it, and it seems to make a difference, and that is you take a, a brush that's a clean brush, you're just about to use it for, uh, for painting. And uh -huh. uh, before you dip it in the color, uh, what you do is you um, douse it in, um, in linseed oil. Okay. So that the, the bristles uh, are, the bristles or the hairs are all um, uh, saturated with oil. Okay. And then you, you wipe, the oil off of the outside bristles. Uh, I mean, you know, you can pretty much squeeze it out, but um, what it does is it leaves the inner bristles or the inner hairs lubricated. Okay. So that, so that now when you start applying the uh, paint uh, that you've mixed up, the uh, the brush is going to behave in a different way. It's going to be much more flexible because you've made the interior uh, hairs or bristles um, lubricated. They slide against each other better. So Have your you brush is going to behave in a very different way. And it, uh, and I thought that was just neat. Have you tried that out yet? I I've done it every day for the last week. Does it work better with certain brushes, like a, a round or a, like a liner, or, or pretty much every well, every brush? No, it, it works. It works. What it's it's like. Think of it as a, a mechanical device. You think of it as a like a mechanical device where you've got these hairs and the hairs are sliding up against each other. Well, if they're all dry on the inside, and uh, and you've got paint on the outside the inside is going to behave differently but okay. if you but if you have the inside uh, hairs lubricated they're going to slide against each other rather than being pushed over like that just, the the brush just behaves in a different way in a way that i think is like whoa i i nobody told me that i wish i had known 
Well, let um, me ask you this. Your, your technique of using the, the tray to, to saturate the brush tips in with linseed oil, and I think the suggestion was made to use walnut oil, too. That, is that I can't, I, I can't that? understand. What, I don't know what you're saying. Uh oh. oh you, the, the, the paint tray? Yeah. The, the, uh, the, the paint roller tray with the brushes in it? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's full right now. I've been lazy about cleaning my brushes, but I can go to any of those brushes and pull them out and uh, use them right now. So it's not okay. like, you know, I've got a week's worth of dirty brushes there or what used to be dirty brushes. I cleaned them off and then I, rather than washing them in soap and water and all that, uh, I just leave them sitting in the oil. And right now I can go and pick any of those up and uh, start using it and it's still, it's still good. Well, does that help you with the technique you were just talking about? Can you go straight from that tray to, uh, uh, no, those are way. those are two separate things. The uh, the deal with lubricating the inner uh, bristles or the inner hairs of the brush is is that's it's a separate thing. It's just like uh, uh, one is a way of being lazy, and the other is a way of using the tool properly. <laughs> that's a total sense. <laughs> no, but you should you should just you should just try it uh, try it sometime with the uh, the bristles lubricated i don't know what to you know what the acrylic paint uh equivalent would be to do that but that sounds like a a, a trick worth trying out so i'll give it a shot me too john thanks very much for that Warren, we're looking at your scenery there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Nice. You see the uh, oh, wow. gunship? Yes. <laughs> your clouds are moving <laughs> fast too, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, it's fleeting light today, that's for sure. Yeah. Are you in Texas? Uh, Georgia. Georgia. We've got no, no, uh, no problems with uh, cooler temperatures today. <laughs> what, so what planes are those, Warren? What's that? What planes are those? Um, blurry. Just to the right. Well, let's see. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the one I'm painting is the gunship, the 130 gunship. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you see. Yep, we see it. <laughs> okay. Yep. The other ones are uh, older inventory, that's for sure. Oh, I see your uh, your easels blocking the nose of. Oh, I see. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Nice, nice collection. Where is that? It's the edition of Warner Robins. Okay. That's a good tip, though. I'll have to try that out as far as uh, putting a little bit of oil in and wiping it out. Then that could be interesting. So you guys were uh, talking about. Yeah, with that linseed oil tip, that's a good idea, too. Yeah. So are you using acrylic? Uh, oils. Oils, okay. There's something else that's uh, a nice tip. Um, I use a, a handheld palette. I don't always use a handheld palette. Sometimes, especially for small work or for very large work, I have the, the palette stuck up over there. But if you're looking to make nuanced color mixtures, um, having the, uh, the palette handheld like that gives you a very, uh, the only word I can think of to describe it is a very intimate uh, look at the colors that you're mixing up on the on the palette. Um, if the light changes or whatever, you can tilt the palette to another direction. But this is uh, this is the way to do it, as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you have the palette stuck in one position, um, also who who is that? Is that is that Warren? Warren? Yeah, that's what I got. 
this is a this is a palette that's very very thin. It's made by New Wave. It's very very thin. They have smaller ones and larger ones and also different shapes, but it's it's nicely balanced and uh, it's easy to hold. It's very thin and um, if you if you have a big heavy one, you're not going to want to uh, carry it around all day on your thumb. <laughs> But this is uh, this is really nice. Yeah, you can uh, you can just go to Lowe's and get the, the cabinet eighth of inch plywood, and then uh, jigsaw it out and shape it any size you want. And then I don't have it on this, but you can counterweight the back, pull it, uh, so that and you can put a tongue on it to help with the counterweighting. It works great. But uh, normally I use but I forgot my clamp, but I like to have a lot of mixing space. And so this is a pallet I built, folds in half. I can take it to the field and just clamp it down yeah. and get a, twice the mixing space. Yeah. Uh, That's nice. But I, uh, I forgot my clamp today, so yeah. Glad I had this one with me. <laughs> I kept this one too, it's an extra pallet for mixing space. But for all, all those things you just mentioned are, are really true. It's really nice. I think that's one of the biggest challenges that I have. It's, and you, you see different opinions on this just in terms of how to set up if you're painting outdoors. When I've been doing this, I typically, I prefer to sit in the direct sunlight so I can see the actual colors of the paint and compare against what I'm seeing. Today, I'm sitting in the shade and as the clouds pass overhead, it just goes from really dark to really light <laughs> on the palette. So it's kind of a guessing game at this point. But yeah, moving, like you said, John, having something that's flexible enough to move the palette around certainly does help in terms of keeping what you're seeing consistent, or at least at a point to where you can see it the way you've, you've been looking well, at it. It's not just consistent, but you can tilt it into more light to see you know, the colors better and then tilt it right. away to see. Uh, but um, if you're painting in, in, uh, in sunlight, uh, you know, you've seen photographs of uh, uh, plein air painters and they're all, they've all got an umbrella. Yeah. And uh, everybody, the civilians think that the umbrella is to keep the painter in the shade, but the, right. the reality is that it's to keep the, um, Palette. the painting in the shade. Um, yes. And the reason for that is because when you're painting outside, you're mixing all these beautiful colors and, and uh, it looks really nice. And then you, uh, you take it indoors and your painting is really dark. And um, the reason it's really dark is because when you were painting it, uh, you had the full illumination of the, the sun or the full illumination of the sky. Right. Uh, to, you know, to show you what those colors were. You take that indoors and you don't have the strength of that, that uh, illumination. And so everything looks really, really dark. Well, let so me, let me that's ask what, you. That's why uh, plein air painters use an umbrella or they get under a tree or they do something so that the, the most light they have to work with on the canvas is, is a re reflected light. Right. Let me let me ask you this because I you know I've been I'm not gonna say I totally disagree I can, with I can barely hear you, Mark. Is that any better? Can you hear me now? No, I'll I'll just listen carefully. Go ahead. Okay, I you know my own experience with it. I I I'm not gonna say I disagree with that because I, I mean there's so many of them. Everyone else pretty much paints that way, and I've always you know I like seeing the direct light, and I understand that when you do go inside. You know, it, it, it may appear, you know, darker because you lack that illumination. But at the same time, if you illuminate it, let's say in a, in a studio, in a gallery with, uh, you know, proper lighting, oftentimes to me, it, it, it helps bring back those natural colors as you actually saw yeah. it. So I, I don't know. My challenge is in terms of matching what I'm seeing. If I'm seeing something that's directly illuminated, I have a really hard time gauging what that would look like in the shade if I paint in the shade. So I, I don't know if I'm just, you know, different than everybody else in that respect. And 
Um, well, you can I, only match. You can only match one, and the easiest one to match is in the shade because you've got nothing on the palette that compares with the lights of nature. Yeah, just so, make a choice and stick with it. <laughs> but I'm um, in the shade Mark, today. Are your painting. In the shade, though, you have a better yeah. shot at getting the values um, because the the values are collapsed, whereas in full sun, there's you, you have nothing to compete with that. Right. So for me, I mean, I, I agree consistency, but I, I don't know, everybody I've talked to has always said paint in the shade. If you can't get your palette in the shade, at least have your painting in the shade. So for me today, I have no umbrella. I just turn my easel so that my painting's in shade yeah. and, um, and then my palette's in sun. But at least what I'm putting down is in shade. But at the end of the day, you can't match both because right. we just have that range of values. True. Well, I'm, I'm trying it out today. I'm, I am in the shade. <laughs> Otherwise, I think I'd melt out here. <laughs> Mark, your, uh, the, the work you do with color is always so spot on anyway. I, I don't think you should, I mean, wh whatever it is you do, whatever it is you did before you heard me say anything, you were already doing a, a really great job. Well, thank you. I, I'm very, very much a beginner at this aspect of it. And I'm, like I said, I'm willing to learn. I'm, I'm, I'm trying things out just the way I would, you know, I'm, I'm intuitively trying to go forward with it. But, it, but, you know, that's why I'm sitting in the shade today. I want to try it, try it out just to see what it looks like indoors when I take it, you know, take it back inside. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to try anything out. Oh, look at what Bob has. Wow. All right. Nice. Right. His sound isn't working. He can't talk to us. He just uh, put a little sign up that said this was from a passport photo. I think, did you say 1950? Was it your wife's, wife's father? Maybe he can't hear me. I think he meant the, the photo was from 50 years ago. Right. It was a, I think it was a 1950 passport photo. Oh, he's got something in the background there on his easel. Can you hear us, Bob? I wonder if it's his ID photo from Vietnam. It said somebody's father. I don't think oh, okay. he can hear us either. I don't think he can hear us or be able to talk. We need to see, is Alex still there? He's got his propped up. Let me spotlight him. Oh, wow. He's muted. There he goes. Mm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh. great. Yeah. So were you using Prismacolor pencils? Yeah, Prismacolors, uh, just black and white on gray tone paper. Nice. I like the white on there for that, showing that light. Yeah, I'm saying maybe my desk lamp is too. Maybe the sun's coming out <laughs> enough. Nope. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> not quite yet. But yeah, no, I like working with, uh, although, I think I may maybe overdid a little bit with the white. I think no, I don't think so. Kind of less is more type deal. That's nice. So you did that from the one that I have pinned up there. <laughs> yeah, just a little uh, uh, still life you kind of got going. Yeah, so I just took a. I went online and tried to find a picture of um, the different things from the museum, and then I just found one. I thought, oh, I know that one. Let's put that one up there. It's actually a virtual background on my computer number two across the room for me. <laughs> so if I go over there, I will be in front of him. I put a little sticky note over my camera so you can't, can't see me over there. I'm on this one. Well, I guess I could show myself here. Now you should, somebody, oh, Richard, is he in here? I just saw your name pop up. 
Okay, let's go to We can't hear you or see you, Richard, but I see a box that says Richard Johnson. And he disappeared. I have my screen on gallery view and this looks really cool. <laughs> Are you there, Richard? I can hear something now. Nope. Got the wheelie thing that turning around is that in the i have to ask what it is it sounds like a windmill but um i'm guessing it's a rotor on a airplane or a, i don't know like that. who has that in the background it sounds like a yeah like a something turning yeah it's me i'm gonna have to go investigate after it sounds like <laughs> somebody at the park on a swing but oh okay, okay. that's um, yeah it's not that but you're right, it's probably some airplane part somewhere squeaking. Yeah, my guess it's turning around in the wind. It's yeah, it could be. Right yeah. Whatever it is, it needs attention. <laughs> needs some WD-40. Paint me, Warren! Paint me, Warren! <laughs> <laughs> going to be behind some building. I won't even be able to see it, but... <laughs> Oh, look anyway. <laughs> so Richard is trying to log in from his car, but it's his daughter that's trying to do it for him. So it hasn't worked yet. <clears throat> Oh, now everybody's going to see that I'm a mouth breather when I work. <laughs> well, I haven't heard any uh, bad words coming from Chris yet. That's normally what I hear from him. <laughs> uh oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I had a I had a welding student one time. She said, "How does this really work? How does welding really work?" And I said, "Magic and profanity." <laughs> Yeah, I think Sam goes for home renovation. He used to uh, uh, talk to himself and the painting while oh. he was working. He would he would say things like, "Oh God, what what did you do that for? Oh, this is this is terrible. That oh, it was like that." I do that to you. <laughs> oh, I'm constantly talking to my tools, coaxing them along. <laughs> I heard Sergeant uh, with. Uh, person say this is unpaintable when well, he's doing clean air painting yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> that well, was that just there's something in common that was just to psych out the landscape so it would say ah ha, ha i'm winning and then he'd pull it out he was just playing with it <laughs> yeah that's true well i think we need to have more of these sessions this is pretty cool to watch 
Well, all the snippets of advice too are just great. Yeah. Uh, you guys could have your new Bob Ross show. Like John Decker could be the host, <laughs> and then he, he paints with you guys. <laughs> is uh, so? Is John in California too? Yep, both yep. Johns are in California. This is great. We got so many Californians. It, yeah, it has to be a Californian, but he doesn't have to wear an afro necessarily. <laughs> so plus Alex in California too. So you've got three on that coast. Yeah, we got three. We've got Georgia, Mississippi, New York, Australia. So we are an international event. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. We're painting the happy freeway. <laughs> Thanks to you, Chris. I've had the Brady Bunch song stuck in my head all day. Which, which song? Brady, Brady Bunch. I do think all of you guys need to do a self portrait with mask at some point. Yes. This, yeah, the gas mask. I was hoping oh, yeah. to do a studio tour with the mask on. <laughs> <laughs> or even just your, you know, because of the pandemic, wearing whatever mask you wear when you have to. I don't know if all of you are mandated when you go in places, but we are here in Virginia. Yeah. 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 We started teaching our classes uh, at the college last mm -hmm. week, and we're having to do it um, both traditional and uh, online at the same time. So now I am, as I'm teaching to the class behind a shield and a mask, I'm recording it, and then we're virtually teaching the students at the same time. So it's kind of like spinning three plates at once. But uh, yeah, wow. I'm uh, trying to get used to the whole idea of wearing a shield or a mask or a combination of both. And uh, yeah, I feel bad for all the lip readers. I know, I'm having I thought to about do the that. same thing, Mark. Um, I teach in a co-op. I teach English uh -huh. writing, and um, so they, the ones who aren't comfortable coming in, are getting the option of a live stream. And I have right. one in each of my classes. So now I'm live streaming my classes, and wearing a mask, and talking for three hours. <laughs> I can't answer the questions of the kids on the screen. So now I'm right. having to set up extra office hours for those kids to contact me. It's a mess. Plus I have to send them all of their work um, electronically. So it's Yeah, so, it's exact same situation here. We're doing the same thing. And I'll be honest, I mean, it's, it's a huge challenge. And as we figure it out, you know, I'm kind of discovering new things, but at the same time, uh, it's it's turning out to be a pretty nice backup because as I, I can go back and rewatch what I was telling them. Wait, did I really say that or <laughs> what did I do for today? And um, but just like what we're doing right now, it's opening up a whole new world of possibilities to to reach out and reach a wider audience. So even within the the American Society of Aviation Artists, we we had a Zoom meeting yesterday that uh, I wasn't able to attend, but it's you know it makes things like this much more accessible, much more frequent. So. We're trying to figure out the best way that we can utilize the, you know, what, what is it? The the more uh, you, you limit, yeah, the more limitations you have that forces you to become more creative. So we're finding new ways to deal with it too. True. I can't record because I have minors, so uh, I can't record my sessions. Um, it's just it's so time consuming too. I did it in the spring, and then we realized we really shouldn't be recording those sessions because there's kids on there. So, huh. yeah, I have to watch my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but you have adults uh -oh, technically. <laughs> well, yeah, it's um, it's a it's a new reality, and and hopefully we can, you know, like I said, make the best out of it. And 
find different ways of, you know, using the, the challenges of it for a good benefit. Yeah. Really? Well, I did have one family though say, well, we're going on vacation. Could you live stream your classes the week we're on vacation? I go, um, that's not <laughs> quite what this is for. <laughs> it's flexible, but not that flexible. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. That's one of the biggest challenges now is that the students, you know, I'm teaching studio art. It's, it's oh, by definition, you be in the studio working. So you know, we try to use the analogy, you know, you can learn to swim online, but do you really want to? So, you know, hope, uh, been fortunate so far that the first week and a half that we've had classes, I've only had two or three that are doing this virtually, and I'm, I'm really trying to make it work for them as well. They just, they have either compromised immune systems or different situations, but I, I'm just hoping that once they realize they don't have to be there every day, that they don't start just watching the movies at 2.30 on a Tuesday night instead of being in the classroom. So, you know, that the, the was new our other complaint too. We were like, if we record these for the students, then they're just not going to do it. And they're going to say they're going to watch it later, or they're going to skip class and say, oh, I'll watch right. it later. So we decided, nope, we are only going to um, live stream it. Yeah. That's smart. I, I'm, we don't quite have that. Uh, we're trying to make it as accessible as we can for everybody right now. I'm sure things will change uh, as, the, as it evolves, but uh, we'll see where it goes for now. Oh, we need to look at Karen here. It looks like she might be finished. We'll spotlight her. Ooh, that's actually a really cool scene. Look at Karen's scene here. <laughs> Cool. It's, a little wow. it's cool. New York. It looks like New York City. That's where she mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Who who is it? Hey, Karen. Karen Lowe. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Hi. Hi, Karen. We just see your silhouette because the light is behind you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> You're I very mysterious to looking. To this today I didn't have a setup, and then when. Everybody kind of said, oh, sure, just do something. I thought, all right, here's the window. I at least paint the outdoors from the indoors, but I don't have any setup right here really that's that conducive for it. For this, I just didn't plan on it, frankly. It actually looks very artsy, even just, just your scene there with your sketch and your glasses on the windowsill and the, the breeziness yeah, you can see coming through. Scene, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, well, like I said, what you can't see straight out the window, I'm going this way. And it's just this whole uh, grid work of, of um, fire escapes and the steps that go down, they, they cascade and they connect with a ladder at some point. You know, if you've ever seen umpty nine movies about New York and somebody, you know, somebody running out of the back of their window and down <laughs> the fire escape and, right. and they hit this ladder that drops to the street, it's all very dramatic in the movies. Actually, uh, we had a fire a couple buildings down Few years ago and it was at night and I saw people in action. I'd gone outside to see what all the fire trucks were doing and sure enough there are people trying to work their way down these. It's it's a lot harder in reality than the movies make it. They're, uh, they're narrow and fortunately people do except for the one that in this part of my drawing that has a little green plant out there. For the most part people do abide by the rules. Nothing on your fire escape. It's you know it's a hazard so right. they don't Anyway, so that's that's what's up. That's what Bennett Avenue is. A lot of these very simple brick buildings, about six stories high, and um, fire escapes. Wow. And that's the story here. Well, that's what's so neat too is we've got so many different um, scenes going on here. We got a few of you guys inside, a few of you guys outside. Some working from photos. That's the fun part of this. Well, if you heard that loud noise, that was our oldest leaving. <laughs> so this, um, I was in Maine in Goss Island. Hall and I were there last September and we had a couple rainy days. So I actually did do some painting. Oh, you can see that one. This is, this is an outhouse out the window. Oh, fun. Rainy day, so that's, you know, it's the main life. You get a nice cabin, but ah, it's an outhouse. I need 24-7. My first night there at midnight in the rain out to the outhouse. Too much fun. <laughs> and then another day uh, was raining. This was from 
the dining room out of the shed with, uh, you know, with classic Adirondack chairs. I don't know how much you can see that. So I'm not really set up for the viewing here. Oh, well. <laughs> Those are great. I think they came out better than my fire escape. So right now, this is a lot of line work and perspective. And uh, I think at one point, when I did this floor, I was looking out the window at one too high up. I skipped the floor. When I was drawing, I said, hmm, that's a little different on that perspective, you know. So all in a, all in a sketching process. <laughs> Love it. Let's put you guys back as the Brady Bunch here. Keep thinking I'm on the playground with the merry-go-round that's blowing in the wind. <laughs> it sounds like Sally's um, windmill. <laughs> this is windmill and it just, it does turn. Sorry, you guys. Turn. I can mute myself. Ah. No, 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 you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. It's nice ambient background noise. <laughs> exactly. Right. Amber, looks like you had a nice break there. Spending some time at her place. Uh, oh, yeah, at Sally's. It was beautiful. Yeah. I, I had planted, I took my paints down and everything, and and I had big, big um, inhibitions to do lots of work while I was down there, and I got nothing done. <laughs> 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 I just did. By the time I finished feeding animals and Oh, that sort of thing. By the afternoon, I had to like it was only a couple of hours, and then once I'd done everything, it was um, a couple of hours. I'd just sit down just to have some lunch, and then I by the afternoon I was getting ready to to feed them feed them for the afternoon. So it was just um, yeah, maybe think um, I don't, don't ever really want to go back to a big property again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, not in Australia anyway. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll come move to America for a little while. Well, we have 164 <laughs> acres right behind us, right next to us. Are there bears there still? <laughs> <laughs> no, John, John's not invited. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me get my um, American um, when it got rights to arms over there, and I'll be right. <laughs> black bears are pretty harmless. We don't have issues with black no. bears in Virginia. No, according okay. to, there's a misreading of the Constitution, and some of the bears think that they have the right to go around with. So, <laughs> the, the bears, yeah, the right to bear arms. arms the right to arm bears. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you though, Amber, there's a road that we drove on often called Pamunkey by my house. Do you remember yes, that? I remember. Yeah. So um, Kate and I were driving home from the store one day and we, I was like, what is that in the road? Is that a big dog? And it got up and it walked across. It was a bear. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. That's about, oh, three miles from my house. Three miles and there have been some bear another. sightings, but they're Virginia black bears. They're, I mean, they're looking for nuts and berries. They're not looking to eat artists uh, and, you know, Australia. Oh, there's one, there's other <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> I think it's funny freaking out the Australian when the Australians yeah. live the most deadly insects <laughs> and beasts. <laughs> So I've seen that picture of spiders, like with spider webs all oh, over, like parks. Are those true? Um, I haven't seen that for years. I remember there was a, you know, there was a pandemic of spiders at one stage, but I can't really remember it. That was ages ago, like years and years ago. Oh, but I, I mean, I would imagine. Well, they, the spiders, they, they go along with in the wind, so I don't know. 
<laughs> she's like, I'm never going to Australia. <laughs> you got some deadly um, stuff over there. Yeah, but we don't. Um, it's not teddy bears anything. are lovable. <laughs> Pardon? Teddy bears are lovable. Yeah. <laughs> There's it's like they say, don't the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's wise. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, Jim Beats looks like he's joining us. Woo! Welcome, sir. We can get him to start his video and his unmute himself. So you'll be able to see him. He should be able to see you. Jim Dietz is here. There he is. Wow. We'll tell him that. Uh, can he hear us? He should be able to. He's muted. We can't hear him. Whether Jim, I you just want to know that <clears throat> I uh, <clears throat> I told. Uh, uh, Craig Nelson, that you said hi, that you spoke of him uh, at Art Center. I haven't heard back from them, but you should know that he's on um, he's on Facebook and Instagram. He's doing really well. And, uh, I think the uh, director of the Department of Art is painting and uh, and drawing at the Academy of Art in San Francisco, and he also teaches a lot of workshops. Yeah, I, I, I sort of stay in touch with him on Facebook a little bit. Okay, we yeah. Were, yeah. You can see I just got up and I'm sort of, uh, but but yes, he, <laughs> talented guy, has been a teacher for 40 years. He did well enough to make a living at it. And he genuinely uh, is a very, still a very, very productive artist. Uh, he was one of the guys I thought last year might be interested in uh, some facts part of the Marine Corps art program. Uh, but yeah, well, make sure if you do see him to say that I, I, uh, I think I might even send him a touch with uh, the uh, contact or link with this show so he knows how uh, he ends up being famous because of his hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is everybody this morning? California, right. Oakland. Mississippi. North of San Francisco. No, 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 no. I mean, not Craig. I mean, uh, 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 is, is this a uh, plain air painting morning or? Yes. 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 And is, is, is it just us here? And I'm in my bathrobe going like this, going. You get to see the real me. I'm making an audible. Not very pretty. Hey, Jim. <laughs> We're gonna yeah. do now. We're gonna move into figure drawing in the robe, and so you can um, get in there. Uh, <laughs> well, wait a as, second. As, as, as anyone will tell you, that genuinely, as I remember anyway, that all our models would show up at Art Center in a really beat up robe, and most of the time that <laughs> they were not hired for their physical beauty. Yeah. And many times you didn't want them to take off the robe. And, and, and in this case with me, that might be exactly the same sort of idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, We've all been in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> well, is everybody painting the same thing? Are they all painting a canteen? And no? No, no. everybody's doing their own thing. Yeah, they're well, they are. Their own thing. Summer well, painting. I have my uh, I have my thirty by sixty World War One dogfight painting. I don't know Ooh. how that would fit in. Oh, <laughs> um, it's it's still in the pencil stage. Oh, nice. But I, I I wish I could send you uh, Chris. The I did a book cover, still life of Marine Corps stuff. Now oh, nice. from Vietnam. Now, well, uh, quite a few years ago. But it fits right in with what you're painting. I'd like you. I'll, maybe I'll Good. send it to you as an email later. Oh, that's cool. We, yeah, very nice. 
I hope everything went well yesterday. You had a lot of positive feedback. I got, I got a ton of martini chatter with Patty. And I wanted to tell you one thing, and, and this is absolutely true. When you said, what has made you a success? The, the thing that should have popped right into my mind was, well, obviously I married the right woman. Yes. And, and, and when I mentioned this to Patty, she said, I nearly came in and pushed you out of the chair to say that <laughs> he's forgetting something quite important. He married the right woman, a bookkeeper, an organizer, and everything else that kept me on the drawing board. So there you have it. There you go. Now, now she should be a little happy. <laughs> that's my secret too. Be if I can get, that's about the right height. Well, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm, I have my dog to walk this morning. Um, how long are you going to be? Uh, a, oh, I missed the summing up. It. I went out bicycling from at our at our house four to five, and so I mit, I thought I was going to get back for the end comments. Um, I hope they were positive, and I, I'm sorry I missed them. Oh no! Thank you, sir, for being there as long as you could. Well, I I could be there forever. I you know I'm out of work so. <laughs> Patty said, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, sir. What time is it right now? Do you know? Eastern Standard? Well, in, well, right now it's uh, 8.30 my time. 11.30, Chris. Oh, 11.30. Okay. So let us know when 12 o'clock rolls around and we can start doing the show and tell. Okay. I will. Everybody not me. Chris. Not me. No, not him. I will. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> 12 o'clock. Jim, are you in LA? Who, me? Yeah. No, Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Oh, okay. Gotcha. The West Coast is very well represented today. Yes, yep. we have one, two, three, four. Kelly, if I wanted to get, so I don't have to see myself, can, <laughs> is there a way to get the panorama of people who are, let's see, it says uh, switch to gallery view? Correct. Ah, yeah. Yes. There cool. you go. Now it's the Brady Bunch. Cool. That's that very fun? neat. I'm going to get out of here because my face is too ugly for me to look at. Yeah. Um, but I'll check in again after I've walked a dog or okay. sometime. Hey. Oh, that's my foot. I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Well, thank Stop goodness you have the video. robe on, sir. Yeah, there you go. Now that's a much better look for me. <laughs> all right. Good morning, all. Have another cup of coffee. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right. Well, that's nice. Who are you talking to, Chris? I was just saying that's nice. It's not every day Jim Dietz just shows up and casually talks in his bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went by his still his <laughs> It says he's still on here, but you can't see his video feeds. And he can hear us if he's got it near him. Okay, dokie. Don't only say good things. He's awesome. <laughs> what a guy. You know what I really like about him? He sends people free art. <laughs> <laughs> we are recording. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Only people that he's met recently. <laughs> like in the last 12 months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Since last uh, November. Hey, we yeah. could do a secret Santa and you guys could send each other your art. Like, I'll, I'll organize it, put your name in the hat, <laughs> Ooh. tell you who your secret oh, Santa yeah. is. That'd be yeah, yeah. Although, I don't know if we'll ever get anything from you, Amber. <laughs> Oh, Australian a Post is ridiculous. I live in a different city now. It might be a different story. <laughs> <laughs> she has to remember to put that there's no explosives. Same city, same city different suburb. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We'll just put it down to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. That's ridiculous. How's your green going, John? I think I'm getting a little darker there. I'm getting yeah. some, uh, yeah, and I'm working back into the, can you guys see that? I don't know what are you yep, can see much like oh. There we go. Ooh. I'm just kind of working the under the freeway parts right now, just kind of getting all this stuff a little darker. Wow. That's really cool. 
I'm completely self-taught, so. Me too, don't worry. Any, yeah, any <laughs> limitations are my own. <laughs> it was fascinating hearing about uh, Kat's background, um, uh, the Air Force lady. Yeah. You know, yeah. That she uh, Mar was at Maryland Institute of Art. Was that it, guys? I, I think that's what she said. Yeah. Look back and see. I was able to save the entire chat um, as a like a document. <clears throat> I didn't know that I'd be able to do that. So I actually have the entire transcript of the chat from yesterday. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I just had to take out all of my private conversations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was mainly just telling people you're going live in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> or I can't find so and so. Where is he? Or where is she? There were a little bit of panic moments a couple times that nobody knew. Or when I kept asking Truffle who Truffle was. <laughs> <laughs> I have students that did that to me. They would log in under some crazy name and I would have a waiting room enabled for them. You guys, I turned that feature off because you're going to come and go. We don't need that here um, because otherwise it has to be managed every second. So people aren't sitting there waiting and uh, with students. So I'm like, I don't know who, you know, John boy number three is. You got to tell me who you are. <laughs> When you say John Boy, I think of the Little House on the Prairie. I said yes. that the other night for Satley. I went, good night, John Boy. And she went, Oh, that's the Walton. <laughs> the Walton. The Waltons. The Waltons, was it? Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Good night, John Boy. Yeah, I got yeah. called John Boy enough as a kid. Oh, John I Boy or Mr. Rogers. Oh. oh. But you know what Mr. Rogers says? If they're picking on you, don't let them get to you. So I yeah. said, okay. Yep. <laughs> I grew up with him too. Oh yeah, that documentary. I haven't seen the the movie with Tom Hanks. I'm not sure I can handle it, but I've seen the documentary a number of times, and it's pretty amazing. Just the yeah. the tough issues that he addressed and and how he addressed them. And yeah, I met him in Pittsburgh, and he's exactly like he was on TV. He, I was um, a living babysitter when I was in art school. I was with the children. <laughs> out on the streets and they came across me. Of course, they were big fans. I watched a lot of Mr. Rogers with them. He was just as, you know, like, hey, that's what you see is what you get, who he was. Yeah, wow. that's what I've heard. That underpass uh, painting, that would be a great one for raising money for homelessness. Yeah, that's how it, this whole, I, I started a whole series with um, uh, unicorns hanging out on freeways. I know, and I, I started out, uh, there's this kind of little kind of uh, crack park underneath um, uh, the MacArthur maze here, uh, one of the freeways. And I was painting under there and this guy came along and a homeless guy and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just painting. And he's like, oh, that's neat. So you're going to add color to that? And I was like, yeah. And so he kept coming back and he he brought me some some Snapple or something like that. And he said, Aww. oh, you know, here you go. And he said, he said, you know, you should paint on there. You should, you should paint a blessing for Terry. And huh. I said, are you Terry? He said, yeah. And so I did, I, I sort of like on the side of it, I sort of ghosted in a blessing for Terry. And then I, I thought about it and there were these, all these guys hanging down, you know, just sitting in the sun and underneath this overpass. And, and I decided they needed somebody to look out for them. So I started painting unicorns kind of hanging out on the top of the freeway. And they were then that sort of morphed into this whole other series of you know, unicorns and dragons and just creatures that were hanging out under these uh, on these freeways and so that guy Terry kind of started it all. Aww. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of that in my neighborhood. Just people you know living in very compromised situations. There's a guy living in a black suburban. He's been there for two years, moving back and forth. You know, I've met him like just a handful of times, but he's been he's just been down there for all this time. Wow. You know, just kind of moving from one side of the street to the next according to street cleaning and yeah. kind of keeping to himself. We've had some some kind of bad scenes out there with folks, but for the most part, it's just, you know, people living on the margins and just trying to survive. 
I worked for a company that did um, direct mail fundraising. And so I wrote letters for like United Way um, and some other organizations and like local places actually in um, California, mostly mostly San Francisco. I, I'm blanking on the name of the organization. There are several homeless shelters. Um, I know yeah. there's a lot of them there, but they they had several different locations. And so I wrote a lot of, you know, appeal letters for them. That was like my job. And at first I felt guilty getting paid to write these letters. You know, I thought, well, this, but I, I need a job. I got to feed my family too. So, you yep. know, and hopefully the letters brought in, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for them. So yeah. 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 There's a lot. Covenant House. There's a bunch of bunch that of places around Covenant here. Covenant House. I think that's yeah. one of the ones I wrote for. Yeah. That's one of the youth outreach places for uh, um, youth on the streets. Yeah. Yeah. And actually it was interesting. I was in Starbucks the other day and um, a fella had a shirt and he had a picture of himself without a mask on the shirt and it says, hi, I'm John. Aww. And his brother had developed this whole, um, they're called C-S-E-E me T's T-E-E. And so the idea is that if you're working with uh, at-risk people, if you're working with, well, if you're working with development, disabled people, or if you're working with anybody, nobody huh. can see your face. They can't see your own smile. You've got to learn how to smile with your eyes. Or as a backup, people are starting to wear these, we're wearing these t-shirts. And, and so they could see themselves, you know, they could see the, who they were dealing with without having to endanger anybody. It's kind of interesting concept. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, That'd be a great thing for teachers too. Exactly. That's what he said that they were kind of marketing it to, you know, nurses. Te well, I mean, nurses really can't use them because they're wearing scrubs and stuff, but yeah. But to teachers and stuff like that. Huh. Well, maybe he needs a whole line of scrubs. Yeah, that would be oh, that'd be great. Yeah, instead of t shirts. There we go. Yep. You can't sell them to TLC, you know why? Because they don't want no scrubs. Wow. Um, ha, ha. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, you're so over it, aren't you, Kel? <laughs> Hell, you, you be miss married, them, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll send them your way for a little while. <laughs> it doesn't go. <laughs> we make dice out of everything. Chris will fit in here really, really well. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Whole continent of dad jokes. Oh right. my, yes. It's oh, rubbed off on the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love just sitting here watching you guys working. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Typing. <laughs> No, it'd be interesting to see what everybody's doing. I don't know what happened. We lost the video feed from Mark and Warren. It shows me you want to logged in. Oh, there's Mark. Sorry, my my phone has probably got about ten percent left. I Ooh, hope it doesn't gosh. get done. <laughs> I've just about got mine wrapped up though. Ooh. Yeah, we got about 15 more minutes, unless you right. want to. Are you about finished, Chris? In there, yeah. Pe people, um, what's everyone doing? Are they getting close? I'm uh, done. Sure, why not? We'll want to start with Mark. He's only got 10% or less battery in his phone. All right. Let's start with Mark. We'll start our critique and uh, show and tell. Mark? Okay, I don't know how I need to do this, but uh, let's see, I'll turn around. This is what I'm seeing right here. This is uh, Lake Florence in Gulfport, Mississippi. Wow. Uh, I live right across the street from this now, so this is my first chance to pick up my paintbrush and try to paint, um, gosh, I guess since mid-June or so. And here's my little attempt dealing with the fleeting clouds as they were coming and going. I don't know if y'all can, if it's showing oh, up. Man. Mark, I don't know how you do that. Yeah, oh, good. you're yeah. awesome. You can't uh, see it. It's, it's not pretty, I promise. <laughs> uh -huh. Yep. Remember when he painted the chapel here at the museum? 
a couple plein airs. Pretty isn't the same that as pretty. Was, that was well, that was fun. So, it, I tell you, this has been challenging. I mean, like you know, taking y'all's advice about sitting in the shade, it's definitely a. Uh, uh, for me, a bit more of a challenge trying to get an accurate read on the color, but I don't know. I'm, I'm anxious to take it inside now and, and see how it looks indoors. Okay. All right. Like to share next. Do you want to share, Chris? Yeah, I'll show what I got. It's not quite done, of course. All right. Well, so I don't know how well you can see this. Let me do the same thing here. I can see yours pretty well. It's not super close up, but. Well, we'll do a little bit of a. It's kind of hard to see. Ah. That's real close. Oh, so, wow. So basically, I don't, can you see that? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So basically, um, it started working pretty well with coming in. Uh, the, the acrylic was actually to do some, some modeling of the, of the edges and a little soft as I was using some thinner, some acrylic thinner, which worked. And so it's not too shabby. I'll just go in and do a little bit of darking, darkening certain just dabs of shadow to highlight or to concentrate or whatever you call it, focus on the shadow. And then it, it'll be done. Nice. Quack. Okay, anybody else want to share? <laughs> Alec, you ready? Because I know you were finished. Yeah, I can share. <laughs> ready for me, let me know. I'll try to turn my computer around. Showed before, but I just did the little Tarawa scene from the museum. Nice. Yeah. Right, Alec? What are you using? Oh, wow. So, you know, standard standard stuff we use when we're out, or at least I think most people use. Yeah. Uh, black and white prism color on some tone paper. Yeah, that's great. Anybody else? Give me two more minutes. Kelly, uh, <laughs> Kelly you want to do me? Yes, let me find you here. Computer out the window to show you what the scene really is. Ah, let me see what I can manage here. Cords only so long, of course. Yeah. Put the, trying to put the computer out. Uh. <laughs> Whoops. Hope I got enough power. So I don't know. Can you see? Yes. The fire escapes um, over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So trying to do fire escapes. Let's see if we can get that in here. <laughs> now we can see you. There we go. Precarious, oh, precariously balanced. So anyway, so this is uh, it's really, you know, in it, uh, studying, you know, lines and perspective and um, kind of a little wobbly. It's interesting, the keystones here look like they're off center. In reality, they are. So I don't know if at some point in time they replaced windows or what they did. Huh. But, uh, you know, I tried to draw what I saw. As I said earlier, I started with this window. When I went up to this one, I think visually I skipped a floor. So huh. that made it a little interesting trying to get the perspective to straighten itself out. But, uh, you know, that's, this is typical New York. What I'd really like to show you is that one of the cool things they did in Maine last year on a rainy day, and I think I mentioned this earlier, but uh, part of my favorite sketch is actually an outhouse. And this was a rainy day from a window in a Maine place, and this was your 24-7 go to. <laughs> nice. Uh, my favorite little sketchbook, I just use a little uniball and uh, do little black and whites. Nice. But uh, I, I really wanted to, I hadn't thought about doing this, so I was going to check in, do a little grocery shopping for some dinner tonight and check back in at noon. But it's so fun hanging out with everybody and hearing everybody's tips and tricks. I thought, all right, how fast can I just pull something together to be part of this? And out the window we went. <laughs> Uh, that's the story. Excellent. Um, Bennett Avenue, NYC. <laughs> right. back in. All right. Who else would like to share? I'll go. Let's pull you up here. Okay. 
spotlighting you. There we go. That, too much glare. So this is what um, I, I love this underpass. It's been uh, becoming over more and more overgrown in the last, you know, since I, I moved here 25 years ago and just become more and more overgrown. And um, what really caught my, my, my eye yesterday as I was driving up to my client's house after the um, symposium was this red truck up here. And of course, it's a really blurry flip phone photograph. And so it's just a, uh, it's really sort of crazy right in here where there's a scratch, big scratch on the lens. And so you've already got kind of an impressionistic thing going on there. And so, uh, so this is what I, this is what I did. Nice. Yeah. And it's again, you know, trying to, trying to get that density in here and, and, uh, and the, the vines up and down there. I'd like to work that in with a little bit more of the smaller brush and, but just mostly working on the gradations of, of the underneath of the overpass. And, and it was funny, I noticed that the side of it was a lot darker. Maybe there was light reflecting up here, but also just the really hard shadows down below that you get. So here I backed up a little bit. Little, this little little spots of yellow is for the turn signs there. So oh, oh, that's it. Got in the green. That, that was John's tip, I think, about adding some what, burnt sienna or burnt umber to that. Yep, yep. That's and so that's why I did working in here and especially yeah, down at the bottom there. So. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Nice. And anybody else? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Did you work in purple <laughs> amber? Um. Yeah, I don't mind it actually. It's nice. um, um. Did we lose Warren? My back. Uh, Warren's here. I see him now. Oh wow! We might have lost Mark. Okay, is John? Are you ready? I'm trying to figure out a way to show you because I I did uh, I take I take uh, steps uh, you know like progress uh, photographs and I'm trying to figure out a way to show you the uh, the things. Anyway, th this is how far I got this morning, which is not very far, but there are four other. Uh, photographs from last night uh, and I could show you where I started from but I don't see how I can can you see that you can't see that I can see the corner of it yeah that's the bottom half and then I don't know how to show you what I've got can I can I drop a file somewhere no these files are too big probably too big yeah well <laughs> okay so anyway that's <laughs> that's where I am this morning <laughs> I love the colors you use. And you know what's right. really great, John, is um, we ordered all those paints for you at that one like a couple of years ago, maybe. Yeah. And sent them to you. And because um, you gave me the exact names of the colors and the brands you use, Joan has kept that in the archives so yeah. that if your paintings ever have to be conserved in the future, they know exactly the brand, the colors, everything that you um use so that's really helpful for you artists if you are turning your work in to be accessioned into a, a museum collection make sure you tell them what brand paints you used um, the type of panel or canvas you're working on or whether it's linen um, that's all really really helpful to the curators wow never thought about that that's awesome excellent okay who else have we Can oh, there we go. That? Here. Can you see that? Yes, it's a little blurry, but yeah. Okay, so that's where I started. Wow. And then it went to that. This was last night. Oh, wow. And then it went to oh. that. I'm so, it is blurry. I'm sorry, but that's okay. It's just because it's close. <laughs> and then that. Wow. Oh, man. That. And that's where I started this morning, I think, or no, that's where I am this morning. Uh, but uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so that's, <laughs> that's what I've got. Nice. All right, we've got a few more of you. Warren, maybe, let's see, let me pull him up. There you go. Look at that. Nice. Oh, wow. And Warren, what was your training? Where did you? Oh, he's muted. Oh, he is. Okay. I can't unmute him, unfortunately. 
Looks like he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> now he's frozen. Now there he goes. Let's see. Hey. He's got to look at it. Find that tiny little button in that sunshine. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a good hat, Chris. Can you hear me now? Get one of those. Yep, we can hear you now. No. Yes. Uh oh, you're frozen. Sorry, it's uh, you know. Can you hear? We can. Yep. Now we can. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you see oh, anything? Yeah. Wow. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so Craig Nelson, he was actually on uh, some of my review panels at Academy of Art University. Wow. Warren, are you here in California? So, uh, no, actually, I'm down in Georgia now. But uh, I, most of my time was under William Mon. Is, is Craig still as short as he ever was? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> But he, but he goes out and, hey, listen, he goes out and runs five miles. That's awesome. Oh, sure. he, That's more he than says I he does, but I doubt it. <laughs> well, nobody can talk bad about him now. That's respectable. He's, oh, he's a, a great he's, man. I really enjoyed uh, uh, corresponding with, you know, working with him, and uh, he's, he's a great guy. He is a very, very great guy and a very, very talented gentleman and has been since, well, last century sometime. <laughs> very generous uh, instructor also. Yeah, yeah he, uh, our, our mutual instructor was a guy by the name of Don Putman who taught that class we were, that I showed a slide of it. And Don was a really, really facile uh, draftsman and color guy. Um, he pioneered a lot of the bright color painting and acrylics. And Craig was his favorite guy in lots of ways for good reasons. And Craig sort of took over that mantle of being a, a good teacher after he had done really well in the commercial illustration field. That's cool to hear those stories. I remember hearing about Don Putman as well. I, I uh, Glenn Edwards, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he I think he studied with him, and uh, yeah, it's it was great to see his work in illustration and uh, and hear stories about him as well. The art center was a was a really great school for uh, talented people who really wanted to work hard. It wasn't now; it's very very expensive to go there, and it attracts primarily people with uh, rich parents and it's now gone into uh, rightly so into more computer art but at the time we were still doing the regime of what might conceivably be called golden era of illustration training and, and Craig just was so good at that that's why I always thought he'd be good for a Marine Corps because uh, he could draw on the scene and sketch like Richard and Alex so so well oh. Yeah, he's got that book on uh, painting uh, short periods of the time. It's a really great book on painting fast. I, I have, I think I saw it advertised or mentioned in Facebook, but I haven't actually seen that book. Since I paint slow, it's very little use to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Norman Rockwell would be proud of you, Chris. Oh, thank you kindly. Using that stick. Yeah, that's actually where I got the idea. This almost, I can't remember if I was reading his autobiography, but then I said, oh, wow, that's a cool idea. So there you go. And if, if an intruder comes into the studio, you can kill him. That's right. Yeah, it's health orders. It's a, in Australian, it's called a wanna bomb. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I just made that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, elaborate. 
Jim, did you see um, the tour of John Deckard's studio yesterday? He has yeah. a little device on his uh, easel. I saw yeah. that. He has a lot of devices in there. What? What? Jim, did you see the tour of John Deckard's studio yesterday? He has a clever little device attached to his easel that uses uh, that same idea. Uh, it's, it's not a handheld. It's uh, there just to swing up when you need it. John, are you there? What? Did we lose John Deckard? What? John's here. That's, was that's like the picture. kind of conversations that my wife and I have. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hello? <laughs> John, can you share your special <laughs> Russian device? Your well, you, device. Want, uh, you want to see the... Yeah, show Jim yeah, Dietz your so special Russian that. device. There you go. It's Jim this thing. Your, uh, studio tour hey, let me <laughs> highlight him to make like it bigger. That. Yeah, yeah, Jim, check this out. That's uh, that's pretty nifty. And uh, I don't know if you can see from the side, but um, I, the, I keep the painting pretty far out. It doesn't need to be that far out. But uh, there you can see I can put a lot of pressure on it and it doesn't touch the canvas. And when I'm, when I'm doing, a, if everything doesn't fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm doing uh, detail work, you know, I can sit there and uh, one-handed, I can, I can do that. And it moves, you know, it moves all around pretty easily. And then I can fold it out of the way. So, Show him your, how it turns, too, the painting. What? Show him how you can rotate the painting. I love that. How does that work when it's 72 inches wide? <laughs> you know, I've been trying to, uh, I've been trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd, I'd like to be able to do that. Not 72 inches, but um, I had one that uh, worked with 60 inches. But at that size, uh, it was too wobbly to have it spinning on just one center post. So a guy that makes windmills told me that I should have um, uh, like wheels that run around the sides to support the thing on the sides as it turns. But that was, that was too much work to, uh, to put into. And uh, I don't do that many uh, very large paintings. But this is uh, 16 by 20. And, and just on this little rig, I have it set up so I can do 18 by 24. I think you're the modern day Da Vinci, John. No, this is just uh, how do you solve a practical problem? Well, that's what he was, right? <laughs> well, his problems weren't always practical. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, he he's he was wandering around going, "How could I how could I fly or, you know, <laughs> how could I destroy that city over there?" Yeah, Things exactly. like that is what he Da Vinci was doing. <laughs> That's where he made all his money and his reputation. And then he started doing uh, paintings. And so I, I was trying to show, I don't know if you can see, but this is, can you see that? Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah. So those yeah. are the, those are the steps for the painting. And then this down here is the, uh, that's the photograph I'm working from. So last night at 8.30, I was there. And by 11.30, I was there. And this morning, I was there. Yeah. Wow. Do you John, always take your... progress photos? I'm sorry? Do you always take progress photos? Yeah, it kind of helps me figure out where I went wrong. <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, if you, if you can see your progress, you don't feel like you're stuck. Yeah. Um, when you were also, saying yes, at what point did you scrape off your paint in that progression? Well, I just put all this on. And uh, like, I, can you see uh, my painting yeah. here? Right. Yeah. You can see that? Yeah. Can, I don't know if you can see the, uh, you know, the, that's where the paint is. And so I just take a regular old palette knife and do that. So you can see the color is still there. 
So what point in your progress did you do this already? I, I'm having trouble hearing you. Did you already do this in your progression from yesterday to this morning? Did you already do a scraping? Yes. I, I do it in between all of these progress photos. Okay. I, I scrape. Mm. I scrape the paint off. So see this blue area? I just, and you can see the color, is, the color is still there. The shape is still there. But it's easy to go back in and uh, paint over that. And if you're careful when you're doing yes. it, you, know, you can you can be you can work in a very small area and not smear it around. But sometimes, Whoa. sometimes I just go ahead and scrape all the way over, and you see it leaves marks and and streaks and stuff like that. But that kind of uh, it kind of does a little scumble blending, like you see. I don't know if you can see, but uh, there there are lines going out here that I just left and um, that kind of animates the surface and I can decide well you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, leave those in or I can decide well you know I'll paint over that but I was painting all this morning and I just scrape all that off so that when I come back to it even you know in a few minutes i've got a very thin layer to paint in not a big thick layer well this is this is all a result of me not being able to make on the spot color choices like if i could mix color as easily as richard johnson and vic can draw then i wouldn't have to do this but i do everything in half steps i like get the color sort of right and then I scrape it off and then I mix a little closer and I come back in and I paint into that. And, but at the same time as I'm doing all that, I'm also refining the shapes that I've, uh, that I've done. So it's, a, you know, it's like I'm refining the shapes, I'm refining the color, and uh, I do that over and over until, until finally I just give up. <laughs> Who wants to show next? I think the only one we haven't seen is Amber. I know. I'm so slow with it. And I'm trying to perfect the... Well, you the, did start um, after midnight, so you get a bit of a pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> today's probably about, I don't know, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> 2 a.m. here. Um, okay, I'll show you what I'm up to. So... Did you, did you make peace with the purple? <laughs> yes and no. I've kind of done a... Oh! oh. It's, it's more of... sky scrape than, than anything. So I'll show you my photo that I took. Um, this is the other day. It's completely different. <laughs> no. I don't know whether you can see. On my phone it's a lot brighter, but in mine it's... I'm just, I got a bit carried away with the blues and the, and the purples. So, Ooh. um, I like the painting moody. better. Very moody at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just started out with the umber, uh, umber and black outline. Wherever it was darker, that's where I put the um, a bit more black in there. Um, I, I, what I do to, I don't know about any of you guys, but I, um, I tea dye some of my canvases. So it, I'm not completely working off um, a white background. I like it quite, um, I've always, I don't know, just something I've always done. When I um, taught myself how to paint with boot polish, <laughs> go army. Um, so what I used to do was um, tea dye the background and then I'd, I'd do my boot polish painting, but it's just a signature thing that I, I do now with all my work is so I, I put the, 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 it's like a sepia um, colour on the canvas. Um, it's already a prime canvas, it's pre-primed and I, if, I, if it needs another coat, I'll just put it, put it on. Um, 
so anyway so after i've done once i've lightened up that area i'll probably um paint in the the trees uh the silhouettes and the trees on the horizon and the trees the gum trees in the foreground so that's your pretty much a typical aussie um landscape or oh, landscape slash um cloudscape and I'll it's keep working on it. Yeah. But I, it's too wet at the moment. It's, um, um, yeah, I just have to wait for the liquid to dry a bit. Um, and then um, I'll add some more uh, detail to it. Otherwise, I'll let, I'm going to end up with green. <laughs> and I don't want a green, green um, cloudscape, unless it's going to thunderstorm. It's a different story. I don't know about you guys in America, but um, when we get green clouds, um, it means hail. Hmm. Uh, do you get the same a similar thing? In Missouri, green clouds meant uh oh, hail and tornadoes. Yeah, yeah. tornado. Oh, tornadoes! Wow. Yeah. Uh, yep. Glad we don't have those here. Well, that I know of. <laughs> Not yeah, in I my area. Anyway. <laughs> I remember as a kid, my mom calling over. I was over at my friend's house. My mom called, and she's like, "Come home now." And I jumped on my bike and started riding and I heard no birds. And I looked up at the sky and it was green. And I was like, uh-oh. It was like uh -oh. greenish yellow. You're like, uh-oh, this is not good. Yeah. No. Wow. Have you ever seen the spout come down? What's that? Have you ever seen the spout come down? The no, I saw, I, I saw one starting right above me. <laughs> Um, when I was uh, getting one of my cars warmed up and getting ready to go in town, and it was, it was thinking about it, probably about 200 feet above me, kind of starting to s collect and swirl and be really dark and creepy, and and so we just drove as fast as we could. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. 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 200 k's an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. We had some yep. water spouts. Um, just off the coast here in Biloxi last week, I don't know if y'all saw the picture on Facebook or the, the news or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. There were six different water spouts right off the coast. So, you know, little mini tornadoes. Uh, oh, right wow. Off, yeah, right off the beach. It's a, it's a crazy looking image. But if you Google Biloxi water spouts, you'll, you'll see what it looks like. I will. Yeah, it's I pretty will. crazy. I will. Are you in, you're in Gulfport, are you? Yep, Gulfport, Biloxi, right next to each other. Yep. Now, are Keep you near, um, anywhere near the CB? We talked um, about that last year. Yeah, yeah. I know you. I remember you telling me. I haven't made it over there yet, uh, um, particularly yeah. since the shutdown and everything. But that's that's oh, on my yeah. list of things to check out. I've never made it over to the yeah. CB base, but I'm looking forward. I want to see your your work over there. Yeah, as far as I know, it's it's surrounded by an American flag and, and an Australian flag, um, and it's massive. They framed it in a big massive paint in. Frame, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'll check it out. Yeah. I, when, I, when I do, I'll send you a picture of it <laughs> with me by it. Awesome. <laughs> You're gonna get to do a selfie in front of it. <laughs> There's your water spouts, Mark. Yeah, that's oh, it right there. That. Yeah, oh, my I did not happen to see it myself, but when I saw Biloxi, I was like, oh my gosh, that's right off, yeah, about two miles yeah. from here. I, I thought that. I guess Virginia is not such a bad place after all. <laughs> I think I'd rather the bears than the tornadoes, although you get both, don't you? What's that? We what? With um, in Virginia, you get tornadoes and the bears. <laughs> Baronado. Baronado. <laughs> Next. Sheep -nado. I'm waiting for the sheep flaming sheep nado. I've got that on my bingo card. <laughs> So are we finished with the show and tell? Is everyone satisfied? I think so. Yeah. Hey, I want to thank you guys for being so um, chatty and wonderful with the information as you painted. I, I was uh, lost in my own thing, and I, but I was like, wow, this is great. This is uh, the information being shared was wonderful. So I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I see the opportunity. Yeah. Going in oh, again. Oh. Great. Well, next year, hopefully in person, and we'll kind of do a mixture of these things. Uh, for all those who join us, we'll be uh, here. And all who can't, we'll do the same thing. We can actually try to work with our technology to have, uh, as the in-person people speak, or in this case, on the Saturday paint, we can have a, some live feeds going on as well.
Um, and that, that'd be nice. We can join in both physically and virtually. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, so, Chris, so good. Fun. Yeah. Have, Kelly and uh, Alec, thank you so much for, for doing the tech background stuff on everything. It's been really great. It's been nice Absolutely. to Absolutely. Thank you guys for that. Work on that. Once again, I want to break my brushes. <laughs> now we can see them. Yay. Hey, Jim. Yeah, show us the, hey, hey Jim, could you please show us the painting on the easel? Can you, can you have the ability to do that? No. Yes? <laughs> well, I, I can show you it's not in paint yet. Let me do one thing. Uh, give me uh, five seconds. So I'll get the pencil sketch and then show right. you where I am on the pencil. All right, good deal. Yay. Ooh. Behind him. Nice uh, sneak preview. Wow, good stuff. But, but uh, Chris, this is a still life painting I was talking about. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah, the oh. So it doesn't have a canteen, but all right, just a second. Ooh, look at that one. Oh, say that's mm -hmm. cool. Oh, wow. I see a D3 albatross tail. <laughs> oh, my. Canvas sticks. We're, we're going to go fly around on canvas and sticks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> what could go wrong? What could go wrong? I don't think you realize the gravity of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> You're so fired. All right. This is, this, this is going to be iffy because it is all pencil on uh, white paper. And I don't know that if the technology will pick it up or not. And it also shows a couple of what you talked about yesterday, Chris, in terms of doing. All right, hold on. You're looking at my nostril now. I'm going to try to stop that from happening. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so there's the more or less finished pencil sketch after about four goes at it. Wow. And then uh, um, I'm going to remove one of the variations on it. So that's basically sort of kind of the, the finished pencil sketch. Now, w when I did this pencil sketch, I scaled it up to the finish, which is, hold on just a second, uh, right here. But I noticed when it got up big, this is 30 by 60, that the um, perspective on the brisk fit, which I had worked out in a different sort of way, was, was uh, not very realistic. In fact, the vanishing points kind of sucked. And <laughs> I didn't notice it in small, but as soon as it got up big, I had it all drawn out. In fact, most of it laid in. And I said, this is just not gonna make it. And so I, as you can see, I patched in a whole new airplane yesterday, not yesterday, because I was actually paying rapt attention to the symposium, but mm -hmm. uh, I did it the day before yesterday. Now this painting is for nobody. It's just for me. Uh -huh. And it's, and during the pandemic, all I'm doing right now primarily is uh, I have a drawer full of uh, folders of paintings. I sort of said I'd do it someday. And now I'm getting to that someday. So that's, that's basically what I'm working on. I'll lay in the, the uh, Ross Sienna tone, probably this morning, and then get back to doing, you can see initially, the lay-in on the albatross over here. Nice. So that's what I'm working on. Is there a storyline? What's the story behind it? Is there a particular? No, no, I, um, no, it's not real, it's not true, it's just compositionally I thought would be kind of exciting. Yeah. And it actually is a, is a compromise between doing what I'd maybe like to do and what I can do. And um, it's, it's actually, to be really, really honest with you, it's to keep me out of the crosshairs of Patty, who will find a honeydew if I'm not working on something. So. <laughs> That's so awesome to see that. And I appreciate so much when you share your process uh, images on, on your Facebook page. I just, I just... 
love seeing how you go through the step-by-step -step process. It's amazing. I have to tell you, Patty goes, so got your ego boosted a little this morning, didn't you, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Wives can be yeah. so mean to people with tender artistic feelings. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if any of you suffer that from your spouses, because I can imagine husbands being perhaps even worse. <laughs> no, I'm just here. Jim, you yesterday you gave a great comment about wheels being like targets in a painting, yeah. and you showed one where you had a uh, soldier's leg draped over a wheel. He was hanging out on the, uh, the um, front end. And then you had a wonderful one with a streak of light over it, which broke it up. What's your plan for this one? Because I can see a real prominent wheel in the bottom left part of that painting. Oh, oh well, I do like the movies do. I'll just put a little wisp of cloud over one uh -huh. of them. How would that be? <laughs> I like it. I like it. I got to see... find you on Facebook so I can watch your process. Uh, well, sometimes on, on some of the aviation paintings, uh, um, as Mr. Poole will probably admit, I, I do do a full section of, you know, five, ten sketches that made it because most of the Facebook paintings are done by amateurs who go with their first idea and don't work out compositional things too well. And it's not really my place in the world to, to instruct or to tell people they're wrong, but if they can get an idea that no painting is particularly a walk in the park, then um, maybe I'm helping them a little bit uh, rather than being critical of their work. Awesome. Does that make sense? Yes. Very good sense. So what Jim, are we doing come, next? Oh. Well, this uh, we're in, we're finishing up. We're just uh, we just got done with everybody showing their work, and we I saw we, that. And so uh, we're going to say adieu. And, uh, we're going to wish everybody well and happy painting and all that stuff. And uh, thanks for coming to this year's virtual plein air paint off. Um, round of applause. <laughs> yeah. I'm holding this, I can't do it. <laughs> Around the world. <laughs>